Happy to be back, buddy. <laughs> Thanks for doing it, man. Hmm. All right. And... All right, guys. Welcome back to a, another Christmas episode of The Property Pod. I'm your host, Aaron Horn, and it gives me great pleasure to be joined by a bunch of McGregors. I'm actually swamped by McGregors <laughs> here in the room. I'm surrounded by them. Uh, last week, we joked about Chris Hemsworth coming on for the Christmas show, but... There were many complaints that we needed to get our original Christmas guest in. So we've called in superstar of Australian comedy and TV and logo winner and all of the above, Luke McGregor. Tasmania's Chris Hemsworth. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I I bet everyone's going to be really happy they got me instead of Chris. (laughs) (laughs) You need need to start a rumour that you're buying property that we can spread. Oh, Um, yeah. yeah. I wish. (laughs) That'll work. (laughs) (laughs) I suppose there's different, there's different budgets. Maybe we could do it as a family, as a joint thing, but it just probably wouldn't be the same. I don't know if we'd, we'd uh, if you had the Hemsworth family all up lined up a beach, it'd probably be people be more interested to see it than the uh, than the McGregor clan. They're a they're a handsome bunch. Anyway, yeah, you're yeah. going to introduce the other guy. Gonna, <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. We've uh, we've started with the stalwart of the family. He's been in here before. Let's uh, bring onto the mic, Mr. Chris McGregor. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, not a problem. I've got uh, I've got three strapping young McGregors in the room, and uh, I feel a little left out. I, I'm I'm not donned in red and black. John's got his red and black uh, looking sharp. How are you feeling, my friend? Good, good. Well, this is lucky because uh, Michael Frank loved it the second he saw it. But it's just uncanny that this particular black and red tartan just uh, happens to be one of the variations of the McGregor one. So it's. Nice when it's actually quite a common shirt pattern, but it's just like, just subtly, it's just like, that's a McGregor, that's a McGregor, that's a McGregor. So that would have been the same masks they wore back in medieval times, so well, they had uh, plagues back then as well, I Yeah, exactly. yeah. If, if the, uh, like in Edinburgh, where they used to have the, um, the pointy masks, they, were, they, didn't, they didn't showcase the fact they used to paint them black and red. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah exactly. Very cool. Mm. Very, very cool. It's, it's historical fact. I, I, can't, I cannot confirm yeah. or deny that. <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> Well, guys, we thought uh, we'd get Luke in today to uh, have a chat with us about all things real estate. You've, you came in last year and um, – oh, we didn't come in. We did it via um, Zoom and we, we chatted. Mm. It's, it's wonderful to have you in the studio. Um, we were just going to talk about everything that's happened across 2021, mm. um, kind of Rotaven um, obviously wrapped up its final season. You've, yeah, you've well left done. the world of real estate yeah, and moved yeah. on to other things. Um, Space Ninjas next or something. I have, oh, to, have to write it. <laughs> man, I love the idea of Space Ninjas. Yeah. Tell me more. So what, uh, what, what is happening in your world before we jump into anything real estate? What's going on out uh, there? I've, I've, got, I, I've got ideas, but I, Seals and I basically just thought we'll take a holiday. My plan was mm. to travel, but that is uh, not... It's a bit tricky at the moment. too good. Um, I don't think New Zealand's even letting us in. So that was where I wanted to go. Yep. So for the rest of the year, just... Get as fat as I can and then um, start trying to work it off in January. That's the plan. Eh? Bulk up like a Hemsworth. Make your way to the uh, east coast and try uh, and see if you can get in his compound. See if I can start auditioning for Marvel. That'll be the, that'll be the goal. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is it a good rest to give your brain a space crea- creatively? So no pressure to do something? It's, it's good to just start doing, you know, just start, you know, living life and trying to have experiences because that's usually where you get your inspiration from. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas... During the lockdown, it was hard to write just because you're stuck inside. You're not really experiencing anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, whereas I need to be on a tram and bump into someone and spill my drink on them. And I know, so I could, so I've got more stand up, you know. Yeah, so, stories, where yeah. I'm just sitting in my room. Yeah, it's difficult. I thought, I thought because of, you know, we're, we're sort of locked in, I have a bunch of time to write. I'll, but honestly, it was really difficult. I just, um, most of the time, you'd spend just trying to stay positive and. Uh, mm. Play video games. It wasn't a lot of. It wasn't as a creative a period as I thought it would be. Yeah, it is a tricky yeah. one. It's kind of like that. Um, getting a uni so- assignment done. It always is done in the last bit when there's kind of a bit of pressure, rather than it it being that. Um, oh, I've got all this time in the world. I'll I'll get ready and I'll do all this. I'll, oh yeah, it's I, was, like, oh. I was the last minute. I, I most of the time would spend. So I wouldn't do it, and then at the last day, I'd start writing the excuse I was going to give to the lecture, and then I'd do it in the week after I got an extension. That was my play. <laughs> that was my play. I quite. Re- I, quite regularly coming up with really good ones. I feel like now in the modern world it would be much more difficult with the kind of you having to put it online or go through all these um, other things. That's a completely off-topic subject, but, yeah. <laughs> you just can't I'm so, gla- just I'm can't so glad I'm not at uni these Matt, days. it's your podcast. You can, <laughs> you want. can talk whatever you want. Well, tell us about Ghostbusters Afterlife. Thoughts? Yeah. Uh, I liked it, but I, I don't think I could discuss it without going to spoilers. So uh, mm. I'll just say that it was 
fun, and if you're a Ghostbusters fan, it's definitely worth seeing. Excellent. Well, very happy with that. <laughs> very excited to see. Well, I, I know one of the things we are talking about before, um, you know, we started as a as sort of thing to, to, to chew on was, I mean, I've, even after this, like the pandemic, everyone's just come out of the gates and tried to invest as much money as they possibly can. People are trying to purchase homes uh, right across Australia, both in, you know, suburbia and regional areas especially. Um, and, you know, that's, that's had, you know, from one sense you can say, oh, that's a really great thing. But on obviously the other end of the scale, the, 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 copy, the topic that's really coming back in the space is the housing affordability element. Um, and it's, you know, I think one thing you're talking about before, look, that'd be a really interesting thing to chew because what, 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 what have you been thinking about? What have you observed over the last, you know, couple of years in that sense now? Well, I mean, the housing market is, uh, it's just, Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, mm. but it's it's pretty much just been going up and up, right? Yeah, yeah. So basically, you can either, in order to bring down the price of houses, you either can um, reduce the demand, so you can Thanos snap half the population away, and that'll reduce the price of houses. Not a bad idea. Mm. Or you can increase the supply of houses. Mm. So the government, uh, if they want to make houses more affordable, and just by that, basically just bring down the price. Mm. So. Housing affordability, I think we talk about, I think we should really only talk about in terms of people who want to buy a house to live in. Sure. So that basically means that they have to, um, so anything you do to help investors is going to make that difficult. So negative gearing makes it harder to buy a house to live in it because negative gearing exists. That means people can buy above their price range mm. um, to buy a house to invest in. So one simple thing they could do is say, um, only have never give like anyone who's got negative gearing now gets to keep it, mm, but mm. in the future, anyone who wants to buy a property as an investment, um, you only get to negative gear if you're going to you, you only apply negative gearing to say people who want to ma- make new houses, yes, so okay. new builds, new builds get a okay. yeah, new builds that grant, get- whereas otherwise, you can't just go buy another property and be like, oh, yep, I'm going to negative gear this e- exactly. And- it's kind of mm. like it's, it's basically government subsidizing, um. Speculation, like you wouldn't have the government subsidise share p- price, you know, share purchases. Yes. So why should they also subsidise? Just because it's a bricks and mortar kind of e- thing. Exactly. Yeah. But mm. but new builds would encourage more houses to be built. So that's one thing they could do. Yep. They could also get rid of, say, capital gains. Get mm. rid of um, stamp duty. Like stop taxing. It's just it's unnecessary. You don't yeah, need to tax these. Tax. Um, state taxes are a bit different because with because which one's state taxes? Stamp duty. Stamp duty. Yeah. yeah. State. So states um, obviously rely on taxes for income, mm. uh, whereas the federal government doesn't. So mm. they don't. They they don't have. They, they deficits aren't the same as a household budget. So they they you can get rid of things. Like, I believe capital gains is a federal tax, right? Uh, yes, income. Is, yeah. mm. So you can get rid of capital gains tax. So. Um, the other thing that government could do is just build more houses. Mm. So they could just build houses and then sell them on the market. Um, in the same way they put money into, um, you know, gas pipelines, communication towers, etc. They just build more houses. Of so we cre- they increase the supply. Mm. Um, Which in turn lowers prices because there's more of them for people to then get into, get out of the renting market. Is that correct? Exactly. Yep. So basically, mm. you got more. You got more houses available. Um, so you got more in the pool. Um, in the same way, uh, if you had ten people who wanted five bananas, the cost of those bananas would go up because everyone's competing for those bananas. But if you've got ten bananas for ten people, for sure. Yep. So mm. that that's some direct things the the government can do. The the fear is, and the tricky bit is, anytime someone says anything about doing anything that might spring down the price of properties, mm. a whole bunch of People with vested interests lose their mind. Lose their mind and say, mm. "Oh my god, the market's going to crash!" You mm. know, all of a sudden, it's going to be your house is going to be worth nothing. It, but if you're buying a home, it doesn't really matter because if your house is worth ten dollars or whether it's worth one point seven million, when you sell it, you're buying into the same market. Yes. Mm. Um, but in, for investors, that can be an issue because they're trying to buy a house and then sell it in five years' time and make more money. So yep. investors get scared, whereas home buyers, it doesn't matter because you're buying for a house. Um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I've talked for a long time. Dad, do you want to jump in there? Well, yeah, mm. this is. Increasing supply does um, help reduce the cost. Like, for example, quite a few years ago, Melbourne had a real huge oversupply of apartments mm, in the city mm. there, and agents were going into the Docklands and turning lights on and off just to show some activity in there. Uh, and which and Melbourne's probably the unit market's got the softest prices in Australia because they still do have quite a there's quite a few there. Mm. Um, and uh, increasing supply will help adjust. New Zealand has just um, gone into got they've just got rid of uh, negative gearing, so we're watching that space to see 
what the what, what happens there. Yep. Oh, how um, recently did that happen? Um, it was only this year. Okay. So um, we, we're watching that with interest. Mm. How long would it take to kind of get a case study or work out what that could then extrapolate onto Australia? Well, the interesting one is like Canberra, they, they've they um, uh, capped the rents by CPI okay. and they lost 4,000 rentals overnight on that mm. one. Mm. Um, so people, and I think media does sometimes when you talk about an adjustment in prices, the media gets on it and says the market's crashed, but it hasn't. Yep. But it, it, it just it puts fear, as Luke mentioned a minute ago, it puts fear in people's minds. Um, and sometimes when it's increased by, you know, a quarter of a percent or something like that in prices, then the, the you know houses are booming. Well, well, it's not. It's just it's you know it's just adjusting. But, mm, mm. Um, but this year has been probably one of the biggest ones we've had for a long time, all around most parts mm. of Australia. Um, the prices increased by about twenty four percent, which is huge. Yeah. Um, where the year before it was about eight percent and things like that. Um, I noticed the guy in today's uh, newsreel on the through the real estate. He's still thinking we're going to get double digit growth next year, so about ten percent. Yeah, so I guess the scary thing for that coming from somebody outside of the game, so say you're renting and you want to kind of get into the property market, that mm-hmm. just seems like a impossible thing now. I guess like the Australian dream always used to be, um, you know, if you work hard and you earn a crust, you'll be able to own a home. Mm. I know we were kind of discussing off mic before just this idea of, is it like a European approach to... Um, living situation where you know the idea i was, I was only listening to philosophy the other day and he was having a discussion about the um, idea of just renting and it's quite often people will say oh i'm just renting as in it's this negative idea of like oh i'll never own a home but i'm just renting i'm only yeah. here for the moment whereas it's like yeah the goal is always to reach that idea of being a homeowner mm. is that becoming an impossibility well it's certainly a cultural thing isn't it because it's the you know great australian dream of um the home, the, the, it's, it's almost embedded into our culture in that sense. Yep. Yeah. Whereas opposed to just being, oh, that's it's just a it's just a choice. You know, so if it's a legitimate choice, some people yeah, the choice is taken away from them. For example, if someone of lower means, but then yeah, you're right. Like, why should they feel demonised for um for that idea? Well, yeah, people could start looking for their dream home to rent, so that becomes their forever home that they rent. Which means hmm. we might have to look at rental laws, take into account. Uh, Dad, you were saying before we started that. Some parts of Europe they allow renters to renovate. That's correct. Yes. And so you know, we, do we start to need to look at the rental laws and think, okay, wh- how do these apply to people who want to live in rentals long term? Yeah. Mm. How do we protect them? Well, what it does for those ones in Europe where they do do minor renovations and things like that is that actually they becomes their home and they're pr- proud of it, um, and they're there for the long term. So they're, they're not moving here and there. Um, and so um, they have started some rules changes in Victoria where they can do minor renovations without permission. Um, yeah, I think there was that something that came in earlier this year or last yeah. year about you know being able to actually nail a hammer in or hammer a nail into the wall without asking permission, sort of thing, like, um, which seems quite small. But once you add that, extrapolate that onto other things. Yeah, in, in, in the th- theory, that works well, except for one or two two people. I mean, the next minute, people mm. think they can you know knock walls out and things like that, which would make it. Uh, a uh, bit, bit of a problem, and also too, they allow uh, pets now, and and that's not a problem either. Until depending on what pet you've got, yep. like there was some, um, there's a couple in the newspaper where there was three three guys bought one of those um, Alaskan, I oh, um, like the Malamute things, Malamute like things, the, yeah, yep. in in a, in, a, in a 67 meter square apartment. And what's it going to do through the day when they're all at work? Yeah, I yeah. mean, those dogs need energy, it, so it's mm. just a wrong choice of pet. It's another thing the government can do, um, and particularly at a federal level, is that. Uh, you know, if if um, uh, people who own houses are willing to let their renters do more, then they can the government can step in and offer more protections. Uh, they can subsidise when things go wrong um, as another form of government spending to try and help yeah, sure. this along. It, it basically, at some point, we have to decide as a country: are we are we do we care more about making sure people who want to buy a house have the the most help they can get? Yeah. Mm. Or do we help investors? And at the moment, it's slightly geared to in favour of investors. Yeah, um, for sure. And un- until we get rid of things like negative gearing and we stop subsidising people who want to buy houses just as investments, um, and it, if you, getting rid of negative gearing might not actually make the property market drop. Might not change too much. It, it, it mm. might actually still rise, but just at a slower rate. Yeah. We just have to do something that sort of slows this down a little um, and – Focus on homeowners, and if that if that happens, and people who will buy a house to sell it five years later to make money, are, are, they are going to lose. There's just no way around it. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. 
and that's and they're a very loud bunch. They don't want that to happen. E- even mm. and, and even economically, um, you know, I'm not saying they will, but organisations like the Real Estate Institute, because real estate agents obviously make more money than more house prices cost. Mm. There's a financial incentive there for the market not to be messed with. Not to yeah, fall well, down and and, and and same with um, state governments because if the stamp duty is based on a transactional nature. The you know often it's nearly at three you know three to well, as far as it's a taxable income for them so it really mm. has to if changes really have to happen at a federal level because mm. the federal government's the one place that they they don't need they don't rely on taxable income to spend they're they're in charge of the currency they can make change they can they can do things the state government can't yep mm, mm. Well, one of the things we're keen to see is, is axing the tax on on the stamp duty because that is a huge um, burden for for buyers mm. um, one of my friends. I mean, people might say he's not poor, but I mean, he 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 stamped duty to change it from his name to another person, from one person's name to another. It was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Please don't explain to me that it costs two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to change it from one person's name to another. And and young first home buyers, they really need to be given first stamp duty relief to help them if they're in, in where Victoria. Where, um, Luke lives in the median's almost near a million dollars. That's a lot of money for someone to come up with the extra money yep. for the for the stamp duty, and then for older people to get out of their homes a disincentive because they don't want to have to go paying another fifty thousand dollars whatever to change to, to the government just to change homes. So it's a tax that needs to be looked at. It's mm. it's yeah, I I completely agree, and it's another one where the um, you know, the federal government can say to the states, get rid of this tax, and we'll we'll make up the shortfall. Like we'll, we won't, we'll make sure you don't lose the money. Uh, yeah, again, it has to. It just it just has to happen at a federal level. Uh, but it's it's a it's a tricky one to get. I mean, I, I think Labor last election wanted to try and eliminate. They wanted to make it so negative gearing only applied to new builds. And the the, the amount of if that's correct, the amount, of, the amount of scare around that that it's going to crash the market. And yep. it's just anyone who tries to dabble, you know, it's a, it's a it's a it's. It, immediately you start seeing these scare campaigns about it. And yeah. again, like I think last time you we spoke with you, we were talking about how kind of this is all theoretical stuff up in here. Like as soon as you try and change something, there's always someone that's going to push back and say, no, nope, the reverse of that's going to happen. It, and always. whoever's got the louder voice will always come out on top or, yeah. The, yeah. So, yeah, a very interesting kind of stalemate really until someone's brave enough to to push the boundaries and say, yeah, we're going to go this far. And well, Luke touched on it earlier too. It needs to be sort of um, grandfathered. So if mm. they've got an idea, um, like, for example, um, you've just bought a home, you've paid $50,000 in stamp duty, and then they change the tax. You don't want to find out that when you, so that you end up doing it on a yearly basis, like a land tax, whatever. The people have just paid their full stamp duty and buying the home. They don't want to be lumbered now with another duty for the rest of their life. Yep. Those need to be grandfathered and then... The only downside of that too is um, some. It may it may make people not sell because now now they've paid their money. And if they buy again, then they're lumbered with a tax for the rest of their life. So mm. they've got to be really careful how they handle it. It, it. That's exactly right. Making sure that those who whatever the law was before aren't disadvantaged by the change. Mm. Um, yeah. So it's, it's doable. It's just we just got to be we just got to make sure that no one's <laughs> minimise any harm to anyone and make sure that it doesn't. Um, Anyone who's sort of just paid stamp duty doesn't. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. And that's the thing. Everyone's looking at who's winning and losing, and no one wants to give any ground. And it would seem to me that when, obviously, for all these, I'd like that. I hadn't thought of it this way, but in the end, who is it? Who's like? Where is the incentive moving towards, and who gains the most? And the realistically, you know, in my thought, would be the only fairest way to do is that there's no incentives to any any particular direction. You know, there's no incentive to new builds, there's no incentive to new home, to first home buyers, there's no incentive to investors. Like, just kill all of it. Um, so it's just a thought experiment, I suppose. And then at the moment, though, because there's incentives in every single direction, once they're all removed, there's always going to be some adjustment where it finds its ground of now that's no longer affecting the market. Um, it's going to take a series of years before that, you know, plays out on on every end of the scale. And so is there a case to be made that the by actually the government coming in and trying to incentivise in any particular way, a good thing, or would it be better if they just got out of it? Incentives are good depending on what society needs. Like if you want to incent, if you if if more houses need to be built because people are homeless, for example, incentivising new builds is a is a good thing. Mm-hmm. The, the only problem is, as Australia, we've made a decision where we have um, we haven't say taken away an incentive. For example, you know, removing negative gearing moving forward. Mm. Um, we've always done things where we've said, okay, well, let's let's give. Um, 
uh, you know, um, single parents' uh, money to buy a house or uh, let's prop up new buyers. So you just keep propping up different groups, mm. which just ma- which doesn't necessarily improve housing affordability. It just means that there's another person at that auction mm. who can that afford above what they would normally be able to afford. So yep. you just ke- yep. it just keeps rising the price of houses. So eventually you need to do something where you take away an incentive which has a, 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 a downward push on housing prices. Which, gotcha. Um, well, it's just removing that group from the auction. E- exactly, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, an, if someone who's an investor can still buy a house, but they can't buy at the price range they would be able to buy it if they can negatively gear. So yeah. that takes them away from that auction at that price point. Mm. Um, so now they're looking at houses, say, instead of 700 grand, they're looking at houses 600 grand. Well, there's something, um, it's, even in my short history, there's a couple of things I've observed in um, both buying and then as an agent. So in 2000 and uh, up to 2010 and locally where they removed, um, well, at, at the time we had the the first home buyers incentive from the federal government, which was at 7,000, they increased it to 14. And also too, locally they actually had halved the stamp duty. And then following 2010, I think it was, you know, obviously dates won't be exact, um, they removed all of them. Mm-hmm. So there was no first home buyers incentive, there was no stamp duty. And we noticed, especially in these um, uh, like first home buyers markets, the demand almost halved. Like the the, the transactions of sales dropped dramatically. Um, ob- um, for my, my, and my sort of take on it was that obviously it incentivised those people that, and it gave them the ability to buy maybe one or two years earlier than they may have otherwise done, because they you know they didn't have to save as much as traditionally you would have you would have had to. So um, then I guess. If now, now all of a sudden they're starting to come back into gear again, so the first home buyers, they, you know, you don't have to pay your mortgage lenders insurance up to, you know, four hundred thousand, then it increased to five hundred thousand, and the pace of those that price has continued to push quite quite fast, um, and now it's interesting. If I guess there's there's incentives across the board everywhere now, so everyone's got an advantage, but now they don't because everyone's got an advantage. So is it, I suppose going back to the idea of the incentives then, is that the biggest problem is that everyone has an advantage and we're not really, um, you know, I'm not, propping up's not the right word, but we're not directing the market to where we think it needs to well, go. We, propping up is pretty much it. We're propping everyone up mm. as opposed to removing some of the advantages that someone has. Gotcha. So it just every, the prices just keep going up and up and up and up. Yeah, and so now it's the, the problem is though is that if we're, if anyone's going to make the argument for someone to be disadvantaged, when the other like, well, how come they get it good, and how come they get it good? So then, no one wants to be making those hard calls. Yeah, it's just you just you just you just basically just need to do things that have downward impact. Like Dad said, removing stamp duty has a downward impact on prices. Um, mm. Negative gearing moving forward has a negative has a downward impact on prices. Prices might not fall; they might just rise slower. Mm. Um, but we just we just we, it's just very hard for a government to um, campaign for. Pushing prices down on but houses because even if you own a house and all of a sudden it's worth it was a million and now it's worth nine hundred thousand. As still, a homeowner, it's still scary. It's yeah. just like, mm. oh man, my house has gone down hundred grand. Um, mm. But the market that you would then be buying in would probably still be at the same at the same level f- space. Well, the, yeah, mm. like yeah. You, you, the idea is because you've removed something that affects the whole market. The whole market's gone down. Yeah, so when you buy a house, it doesn't matter. But it's still you know it's, it's hard. A, it's hard for people to compute. Oh, definitely. You yeah. don't want to you don't wanna hear that something's gone down. So it's just it's just that sort of visceral gut reaction. Yeah. And you, you, Someone explaining the economics of it not, might not necessarily make you feel better. Mm. Um, That's why you never want to look at your Comsec trading app every day because it's going. Yeah, <laughs> but it's uh, but yeah, it's just you know, as a country, we just have to say, are we going to prioritise people who want to buy a house to live in, or are we going to prioritise people who want to buy a house to rent to rent it out to someone? So it's, I don't know. It's it's tricky. Yeah, it mm. seems like a very tricky um, kind of space to be in. It's very interesting to um, chat about it. I guess. Being a Christmas episode, we should probably try and um, lighten the mood just a touch before we <laughs> sign off. It's, it's kind of oh, all I've got, a, I've, got a, I've got a, I've got some podcast feedback. <laughs> yeah. So here are what I regard as the most boring of the episodes. Hit us up. Mm. Okay, it's when you get a staff member in. And then you ask them, what do you think it's like working at one four one four? I mean, what, what are they going to say? They're going to say, oh, I hate it. Like, this is the most loaded question I've ever heard. You put a mic in front of them and you say, tell us how good it is working at 414 Real Estate. I'm like, oh, my God, what are they, they going to say? Oh, I love it. I love the staff here. I love you guys. I love the podcast. Like, well, I hope one of the, at one point one of them just snaps. I hope, goes, one of, I hope someone chance. quits on the podcast and oh, goes, yeah. you know what? I hate it. I'm yeah. out. I'm out. I'd <laughs> love to see a mic drop. That would be brilliant. My, uh, so, so lose those apps from yeah. Moving forward. All right, we'll take out the puff pieces where we're trying (laughs) to just just pump them up. We don't need those anymore. Maybe we could sit there 
and give it a like in in brackets as well. It's just puff piece episode. Yeah. Or so only interview interview employees that have quit and and no longer working. Oh, they go, oh yeah, yeah. 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 As a, like feedback. Yeah, yeah. that'd the, be more interesting. The, interview the, the exit interview exactly. and exactly. record it and exactly. send it out live. We've got yeah. nothing to lose. Here's our dirty laundry. I think it's great feedback, but it makes yeah, it makes sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, mate, we actually do really appreciate that you listen in every week. Um, mm. I know you are kind of you know it's nice to listen to your brother's podcast, but it's um yeah that actually that you give us feedback and say you know I really liked your COVID episode. I really like this episode. It does mean a lot to oh, us. I love that, it. And uh, mm. it's great hearing Dad on it too. Um, it's because, uh, um, and I'm, I do feel like I've talked too much because Dad, you've got so much experience in industry. It's, it's, it's fun. It's just fun hearing my uh, dad and my brother uh, on a podcast. Yeah. Mm. I actually really like when Chris comes in. You've always got um, just, you know, what you say is, is, is brief and important and you get your message across straight away and it's yeah, you're not mixing words up I, and completely I, opposite I appreciate, like John. I always mm. appreciate the three minutes notice too, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> On his way to the bathroom, yeah. Dad, get in here quick. Yeah. You've, you've been preparing 30 years for these moments. Mm. You don't need it. Thanks, guys. Mm. No, not a problem. Well, thank you so much for everyone that's been with us across the journey of the uh, 21, 2021 version of the Property Pod. We do appreciate everyone that's joined us. Um, thanks for coming in and, and having a yarn with us. Um, mm. Absolute pleasure no to have problem. you in. Thanks good, for having me. Good luck moving forward. Good luck uh, across the McGregor New Year. I know there's often um, economic debates that go over across the... Um, Kitchen table, so I won't be, be here for news. So you guys have to go go forward without me. I'll, do, I'll just leave some notes for me, mate. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll leave some bring, bring out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Party on Wayne. Party on Garth. Car. <laughs> <laughs> all good, guys. Merry Christmas, to everyone out there. We will see you all in twenty twenty two. Thank you. See ya. Take care. Awesome. That was great. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks bud. That's cool. No worries. Sorry to, sorry to mock your podcast at the end. <laughs> I actually really like that. Yeah, yeah, it's very I true.